Welcome back, everybody, to my uh, next YouTube YouTube video on in my Codices YouTube series, and today we're going to be uh, looking at uh, soft motion. Uh, just a very brief introduction to soft motion and and working with it uh, within a project. And what's interesting, which you should notice, is that um, I'm using the demo license again just to test this out. Of course, there are multiple licenses to expand on where we are, uh, where I'm, what I'm going to show you today. Uh, but um, we could at least get started and at least get uh, wet your whistle on uh, soft motion in Codices. Okay, so let's get going. So I'm going to make a new project. Uh, brand new project. I'm going to call it uh, motion, motion or motion test, and it's going to be a standard project, and say OK, and it's going to go and create a basic project for me. Now, the one thing I want to use here today is uh, I've been using in the past videos uh, the Raspberry Pi. Today I'm going to actually use the soft motion, uh, soft motion uh, engine that's built into uh, CodeSys. And um, yes, and specifically because uh, my computer is on Windows 10, I'm going to use the uh, version 3 times 64, the 64-bit version of this. So I'm going to select that as soft motion, and and and, and I'm going to do this in ladder logic. Now, um, the only reason I pick ladder logic is most people use ladder logic in North America, anyways, in their PLCs. But there is a different language here in CodeSys that, and and I will cover this particular language later on in another video. But there is another language in here that I would like to uh, point out that's very, very handy and would be and would work very well with. Uh, motion products, motion um, motion programming here in CodeSys. That is the continuous function chart. So this is a function block, almost like a function block diagram um, type language, but it actually connects things together and, and basically makes it look more like electronic circuits. So there's a continuous flow from one block to the other. So anyways, but I'm, I'm going to stick with ladder logic for today and just show you how to do that this motion, uh, basic motion program in ladder logic. Okay, so the code sys is going to go and get loaded. And uh, first things first, uh, the what I want to do is I want to actually use a drive. I need to use a drive for this at some point. So motion control... Um, uh, being a servo drive or controlling something out in the field. So in this case, um, I'm going to actually use a virtual drive. So this is an interesting twist in most motion applications. You can actually use a virtual drive inside the brain of wherever the engine of the motion control engine, uh, whichever engine you're using, whether it's inside the PLC or in this case, actually, it's going to be in my, my laptop here, my computer. So uh, a virtual drive, what's interesting is that we can use this vir virtual drive almost like a simulated drive just to sort of get our, get our feet wet in this motion control world and see how this works. Okay, so there, motion control itself is a large world of a lot of definitions, a lot of different things, and um, we, we won't be able to cover necessarily all of that in this particular video, but what I wanted to show you again is just how to create a basic motion structure and look at some of the, some of the things, and then you can expand on it from there. So what do we need to do? We need to just put a, uh, uh, an axis down, a drive down. So I'm going to add a device. And when I open up add device, you'll notice that in the add device window, we have one of our choices is to add a virtual drive. Now I'm going, going to name this drive up at the top here. I'm going to say uh, V drive, uh, V drive. I'm going to call it, whoops, V drive. And it'll be a virtual drive, and I'm going to say add device. So it creates the device. Now, of course, the window stays open. I could, I could add multiple drives in here if I wanted to, multiple devices. But I'm going to stick with just the one V drive for now, and, and, and we're going to keep this relatively simple just to show you where everything is. 
double clicking on the virtual drive itself goes into the setup of the drive where you can see things like uh, whether you want the drive to be um, uh, circular in nature modulo as or it's referred to as modulo or modulo or circular or finite which would be just a uh, basically a linear type what we would call in North America usually is a linear type axes all right, you can limit, you can set up limits if you want, maximum velocity, XL, maximum XL, decel, and so on, and what type of ramp you're going to use. So whether it's trapezoidal or quadrature, or like S-curve or things like that. There's going to be some things that are available when we uh, get online, potentially. Uh, but at this point, I'm going to leave it at that, and that is my virtual drive. Okay, from there, what we want to actually do is add in, uh, we want to add in our uh, ladder logic. Now, what's interesting in the ladder logic, it's a couple of things, and this is, this is actually standard in most motion control systems, is what you're going to do is, uh, is, is issue a couple of commands that are going to get your motion control working in a certain way. So a couple of things that we're going to do, the first thing is we're going to actually turn on the drive. So we need to turn on regulation on the drive. In motion control, uh, this is in the case of CodeSys here, this is called power, uh, power on or MC power is the instruction. All right, and then on top of it, what I'm going to actually show you is how to do what's called an absolute move. An absolute move is basically moving a uh, axis from one position to an absolute point. So um, uh, if you think of a tape measure and I say I want to go to exactly uh, the, the mark that is two feet down the road, um, you would put in two feet. That's your absolute position. All right, as opposed to incremental, which is basically adding to where your current position is. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn on the power, and I'm going to go and do an absolute move. How do I do that? Well, what's interesting is, is that there's a whole world of instructions that are available for motion control. Of course, that's not under our standard ladder logic or our standard instruction set here. This is an extended instruction set that's available in the box type instructions. So when I double, when I click down and drag and drop the box down, um, I have to go in and find the motion control instructions. So if I click this open, this actually opens up the uh, the extended uh, instruction set. And, and in particular, just because I know what the naming convention is for it, I'm going to go into text search and type MC. MC is the start for uh, the most of the uh, the large instruction set for motion control inside of CodeSys. So MC, and in particular, the instruction that I want at this time is power. It's called MC power. Okay, so if I, if I highlight that and I insert it, um, this is going to be the function block that we're going to use. And I'm going to hit enter. And this is the function block that's actually going to turn regulation on to my, my, um, my virtual drive. Now, like any extended or more advanced instruction in in CodeSys, uh, when you create it, it has to it has to create what it refers to as an instance in memory, an instance. So, if I if I was using this for multiple multiple uh, drives, I might have to issue multiple power instructions, MC power instructions, and I would want a separate instance for each one. So, up at the top here, this is your instance or your your memory area that's being used for the structure of this instruction. Okay, if if that's a little confusing for you, uh, what I would suggest is, um, you know, when you finish this video, maybe going back to one of my past videos, the function block and function video, and it kind of explains a little bit more what an instance is and uh, and how to conceptualize those things. Okay, so, but here we're going to go with it. So here's my instance. You know what? I'm only going to make one virtual drive for the example, and I just want one MC power. So I'm going to select, I'm just going to just uh, optimize that a little bit. And it's going to create that, uh, that, um, that structure for me. Uh, so actually, it, it'll, it should have created it. Uh, Create it up here. It'll actually create it up in my variables. I'm going to go and create it MC power and it's going to be of data type whoops power 
it's going to be of data type MC power. So that's going to give me that structure. Okay, so from there, uh, what do I want to actually do? Uh, how do I use this instruction? Well, it's got some in, uh, it's got some contacts along the front here, and these are inputs to the block. And of course, it's it's asking which axes we want to do this to. We want to uh, do this operation to, and it's going to have some outputs from the block. So whether the block is busy, uh, what state it's in, if there's an error, and of course, it's got a status bit. So you know what? I like these status bits as well. I'm going to go and put a status bit on here. I like to see whether the instruction is actually operating or not. So I'm going to go and do this. So let's let's go through the um, let's go through this. Actually, I'm going to put this back to zero, and it's going to create it for me. MC power, and say OK, and we'll leave it at that. Okay. MC power underscore zero. Okay, so it's created the instance for me. Sorry, I kind of fuddled around with that a little bit, but I should have just left it maybe at that zero in the first place. But anyways, on from there. So what? let's go fill in the, the, the parameters around this block. Again, this block is going to turn the regulation on. If you had this in a real live axis, the, what would actually happen is if before you turn the MC power on, uh, the motor potentially could be spun by hand. You could go up and spin it by hand. Uh, when you turn, when you ena enable, turn the regulator on for um, uh, any motion control uh, axes in any OEM for that matter, Siemens, Rockwell, Omron, and in codices based uh, products, when you turn power on regulation on when you go up and try to uh, try to turn a free running motor free running um, motor um, by hand you'd notice that it was actually regulating in a whole position so that's what's going to do it could turn regulation on so filling it out first thing is what axes we want to actually run so I only have the one axis so I'm going to go and type it in V drive then I, I need to create I need to create all these inputs to it. So let's go and do this. I'm going to say um, uh, v v v enable. I'll just call it v enable. Enter. It's going to create this for me with the input assistant. So I'm just going to go around and do all of these v uh, regulator on. Enter. Uh, drive start v. Uh, Drive uh, DR DRV start there, and I'll go put these in too. So um, uh, for this, I'll use uh, B uh, reg state uh, B drive start. Might have to change that at some point. Uh, B busy. Actually, I'm just going to call this V busy just to differentiate between it. V error. V error ID. Whoops, made a little typo there. Error ID. There. So it's made my my blocks for me here. Okay, so the next thing is uh, I want to use. Uh, oh, I haven't finished the output here. So uh, um, uh, V drive. I'm going to call it stat for status. So meaning whether it's on or off, the regulator is on or off. Okay. From there, my next instruction and my next network here inside Codesys, my Codesys program, is actually going to be an absolute move. Now, there's a whole family of, of instructions here. So, um, but what what I actually want to do at this point is once I've actually got power on and regulating, then I want to issue a move instruction. That's all I'm doing with this particular um, with this particular. Uh, example so I drop down a box and of course I go in and type in uh, uh, MC 
MC and or I just go in and text search MC MC and you'll notice that it gives me uh, the whole list of instructions and at this point you can scroll around and see what all the different things are available so there's gearing gear in and out there's halting jogging move absolute move relative uh, move velocity if you just want to move turn on an axis at some speed um, read position and velocity and torque these we're going to actually use well, I'm going to use velocity and position in the example here read parameters so you've got parameters I mean I mean there's all sorts of things there's a stop so when you move an axis or you turn it on in velocity if you want to stop it you could issue a stop command so so there is a lot of instructions camming uh, there's a lot of instructions that are in this MC world but uh, again, I'm just going to show you a couple just to, to wet your whistle today. So specifically the one I want, and just because I know what it's called, I'm going to call it, uh, I'm going to issue it here, move, and specifically move absolute is what I'm going to use. Hit enter, and of course it gives me the move absolute block, and it, it asks me to create a structure or a... Um, uh, an instance structure to be used. So I'm going to hit enter. It's going to create the the instance structure for me based on that data type. Say OK, enter, right, and good to go. Again, just like we did with MC Power, what we want to do is go through uh, go through the instruction and add in all the things that we need to add in. Now, of course, if you're doing a real program, maybe this is going to be built within a whole framework of a program, right, for a, for a system. But but again, we're just doing a virtual example here. So we're going to use the V drive. That's exactly what we're going to use today. V drive. Okay, and then uh, here's the execute. When I actually hit this button, this this is the drive start or drive move. This is the actual move. So so I'm going to say V uh, move. Uh, move absolute ABS and hit enter okay so that's gonna be my basically my drive start okay uh, p position velocity acceleration I can go in and put these in so V position uh, V V position that be what position I want to actually go to. Look at the data type. It's actually in a, a long reel or, 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 or L reel. So that's in a, um, an interesting data type. But anyways, it's going to set the data type for us here and everything. Velocity. I'll just go quickly through and do all of these. VXL. VDCL. V jerk and V direction DIR. So I'm going to uh, again. I want to put a, a, a contact a coil on the output of this. Uh, this is important because this is going to tell you when the when the absolute move is complete. So if you tell it to go to 10 inches, the 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 mark uh, that is called 10 inches. Uh, once it's there, it's going to turn this on for us. So we really, this this is going to be a useful thing in other parts of our program. So I'm going to say um, V drive, uh, drive, or I'm going to call it V move uh, ABS done. Move absolute done. Okay, and it's going to make it as a Boolean. From there, I'm going to go through and uh, just create these. So, um, move absolute uh, busy, move absolute command aborted, move absolute error, move absolute error ID. There's my instruction. That's going to be, we're going to use that as our actual move instruction. Okay, so there's one other handy one that we want to use, or two other ones that we're going to use, handy instructions in our demo here. And that is, 
um, there's an instruction called read actual position and read actual velocity, which is, which is as the name implies, it's going to go out and grab that data from the current, the axis that's currently in motion or currently moving. So let's go and insert that. So I'm going to insert an empty box, actually a network, and then I'm going to insert an empty box. And that's the same way as doing it from here if I wanted to. I just happen to right click it and do it from here. Okay, so from there, uh, I'm going to go out and select this instruction. So again, MMC um, uh, read actual velocity. Actually, I'll do position first. I'll do that one. Enter. It's going to give me the instance number up top, and I'm going to make that, and that's good. I'm going to make the other um, uh, instruction here as well, my other my other read. So uh, MC read actual velocity because I know the instruction, the name of the instruction. And of course, it gives me an instance. I hit enter again and it's good. So now I can go and fill in the data for these. So V drive. So it's going to be on that same drive and it's same here. And these, as a matter of fact, I'm going to turn these on whenever the axis is actually enabled. So I'm going to use the enable up here as my enable for my reads as well. So it's going to start reading as soon as as soon as soon um, the drive is turned on and regulating. Uh, from there, um, I... I don't need an output on these particular ones. There's nothing. This is just a read, so it's just going to give us data. So I'm just going to fill out. I'm going to leave the output here, the valid output off. Uh, but you could put a you could put a coil on this if you wanted to. But I'm going to go through and fill these out. So uh, read actual position, uh, busy. Read actual position, busy. Read actual position error. This will just take me a minute just to fill this out. Read actual position error ID. And here's the actual position. So this is this is going to be where the actual position is going to be dumped into. So I'm going to say V position, V drive position, I'm going to call it. See physical position, and say good. Now be careful. The the um, uh, you might think that you want to use V drive position or V position here. Just remember, you you you, you might have a uh, a collision with the uh, um, the address you've already created up here. So you want to be careful of this. You could always go back and change these if you wanted to. Change this to move absolute position, move absolute velocity, and then make this the V drive. V position or whatever, whatever, but you, you get the point. Just make sure that they're not the same. They're not the same variable. Okay, so read actual velocity, and this is busy. All right, and this is a read actual velocity error. This is read actual velocity error ID. And of course, there's our real velocity. So V drive velocity. All right. So this is going to give us our feedback. Okay. That's it. That's that's our that's our um, structure, our skeleton of our basic program. Okay. What's interesting is that. In the uh, in the uh, the select the actual uh, system that I selected here was the Codesys the Soft Motion Codesys uh, engine. I, I wanted to use that, so which is basically an engine that runs on the computer. So I'm going to actually go in and start that now. In the demo version that we have here, you actually have uh, in the install you actually have this available. So if I go down to my Windows here and type this in, so um, Code sys, code sys soft motion. You'll notice that it comes up with this app that's that is installed with your with your uh, system here. So, and it's a 64-bit version because I've got Windows 10 64. So I'm going to select that, and it's going to actually launch it and start it in the background. 
Now, don't close this window. You can minimize it, but don't close it because when you close it, you're turning off the engine. So this is basically the engine, and you could scroll around and look and see what it's doing. But really, at this point, I'm going to close. I'm going to minimize this so it's running down. It's the engine's actually running down here at the bottom, uh, and then from there, that'll give me something that I can actually download to. I'm going to save this project so that we have, uh, we have uh, a version to go back to if we want to. And what I can actually do is uh, point my device to the coded sys uh, engine that's down here. So I'm going to scan the network and you'll notice that it shows me, it shows me the coded sys uh, engine that I can download to. I've actually got a second one on a different computer running, as a matter of fact, across Ethernet. And it, you'll notice it's actually uh, recognizing that as well. I've got a separate Codasys uh, soft motion engine running on a different computer called, it's called Monster PC. That's the name of my other computer. And uh, it's actually recognizing that as well. So anyways, I'm going to use the one that's in my laptop here that, that I'm using for the demo. I'm going to say OK, and it will use that. You can see it's actually using that as the device. So now I'm going to be able to download to that device. So if I go log in, and uh, I'm going to go and download that. Uh, my build is complete. And there's no errors. It compiled fine. Good to go. You'll notice that it's in stop mode and the drive is not regulating. But if I go and put this in run, let me go and put the program in run. You'll notice that I get the green circle indicating my soft motion is running. And of course, an orange circle on the drive telling us that the drive is, is uh, also working. So I'm just going to go and manually go and put these put these in. I'm going to go and manually um, um, enable everything and play with everything. Um, there is actually a, a whole set of uh, visualization tools that you can use to um, work with this, work with these instructions if you want. I'm going to actually leave that for another video where I'm going to actually show you how to use the continuous function chart. And in the continuous function chart, I'm just going to put down those blocks and I'll use the visual toolbox there uh, to show you how to operate it. But I just want to get the engine running here. So I'm going to start by enabling and I'm going to do each one individual. So that enables it. It also, as, as, as I said before, it's enabling the feedback down below. I'm going to turn the regulator on as well. And then I'm going to start the drive. So start the drive. So those three are on. So you can see the drive is started. The stat is good. And now I can come down here and I can issue a move absolute. So um, before I actually go and execute the block, what I want to do is put a position in. Uh, I want to tell it, you know, I'm sitting at zero. If you think of a tape measure, I'm sitting at the zero mark. I want to go to the 10 mark, let's say, or the 50 mark or the 100 mark. Okay, so let's say, let's say 100. So I'm going to go in and say 100. That's my number. And I'm going to write that in. What velocity do I want to go at? Well, you know what? For now, let's just do it slow. So 10, 10 units. We'll define that at some later later video. Uh, the Excel, we're also going to just do slow so we can see this. So 10. You know what? I'm going to do, I should have just done each one at a time. And 10. Those are... Are good. I wrote the values. Now, the last thing is this is a move absolute. The direction, there's a, actually a couple of choices for direction. You can actually go the, uh, the uh, fastest, the, 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 the shortest or fastest uh, way to that spot or positive, negative, whatever. You can tell it whichever way to go. I'm, I'm sitting at zero. I want to go positive. I want to say always go positive. So I'm going to say OK, and it's going to say positive. I write that. Okay, so that's going to set up my move. Now, what I want you to watch is down in the corner here, when I actually execute this block, you'll see a couple of things happen. First of all, you'll see me uh, issue the absolute up here. You'll then see... Uh, you'll, you'll see some things turn on down here. You'll actually see the number. You should see the number start to increase. Both the positions are going to increase and the velocity is going to increase. 
all right and then once it reaches once this value reaches 100 what you're going to see is the move absolute done turn on okay so so keep an eye on those different spots here in in the ladder logic so let me go and write this now so sorry double click true and i'm going to write it and you can see it's actually operating see that it's running it's going at a, a, a velocity of 10 and it's still moving position but it's stuck at that velocity of 10 and it reached it and you can see the absolute is done okay i'm going to turn off my uh absolute uh and it's sitting there now here's a quality of an absolute move it's sitting at the absolute position 100 if i tell it to go absolute 100 it won't move it won't move because it's sitting there at, at that point. It's it's sitting at the absolute position of 100. Now, if I had have used an incremental move or a relative move, um, as it's called, it, that would move to the next 100 increments. So it would go to 200, 300, 400. But because I've set this up as an absolute move, what I'm saying is I want to go to the absolute position of 100 so it won't move if I want this to go backwards now or go forwards I have to issue a new position that I want it to go to so let's say I want it to go back to zero I'm gonna hit zero here say okay and write that and then of course double click and write that and you'll notice that it's actually moving see that now let me turn off the move here You'll notice when I turn off the move, turn off the uh, uh, input, you'll notice that it kept moving. Okay, it kept moving in the process. Okay, so so that's good. So it's sitting back at zero now. So that's that's basically uh, how we can move. Now, what what's really interesting, another thing that I like to use is uh, is I, I like to use a I, I like to use an object. Uh, a trace in the program here it, it, it's a really handy tool a trace is a handy tool because it will actually show me what's happening to my log ladder logic my move and so on so I'm gonna make it uh, let's start off by adding the variables so the variables I want to actually add are this velocity and position I want to look at both of these all right so add variable I'm going to go out and add the ver the first variable I'm going to create is the position. So if I double click and go in and let's expand this so we can see where we're going and scroll down, you'll notice that uh, uh, I've got uh, V position is available here. Okay, so that's my blue pen. All right, I'm going to add a variable again. Uh, let's add the... Um, um, velocity this time so um, V position and there's V velocity okay so that's added the two you can see it's actually added if I scroll this it's added the two pens for me here now what I want to actually do is configure this I want to go in and configure this so we can see it so things like time uh, different axes and so on you'll notice along the left hand side it's only going plus and minus 10 uh, and so on and, and as a matter of fact I'm going to change this to a uh, multi-channel a multi-channel so it shows the uh, the position on the top and the velocity is going to be shown on the bottom here okay then I can go in and configure each one of these each one of these pens so if I go in, let's go in first we'll start with the time axes so the time axis is down below here and I'm gonna say it's fixed and the time axis let's make it um, one second all right then let's go into each one of these y axes y axis is the axis on the left hand side uh, the scaling of that axis so let me go and change this so my uh, velocity is going to move let's say zero to or sorry I'm doing uh, position first here diagram one is actually the position so I'm going to do position let's say zero to uh, minimum is minus um, let's make it minus 10 I, I'm not going to go past uh, negative here and then maximum is um, 200 200 counts if I scroll down and go into my velocity I could do the same for that uh, my velocity is um, let's say plus and minus uh, 50 
Let's do plus or minus 50 so we can go a little faster if we want to see what happens. Okay, so that should set up my my uh, my trend for me. Let me go and download. I have to download this trend to the PLC. Okay, and then what I can actually do, let's move this around so we can see things together and just see this thing actually happening. So let's do this again. So I'm going to go and change this to... Um, let's say uh, 150 as my position and right oh, whoops sorry I didn't want to force unforce I want to um, yeah it's written and then when I double click here to start it it's gonna write the values now I got to start my download download my trace um, no task has been defined sorry I've got to do that let me go back and do that. So, sorry, in the trace itself, uh, I have to actually go and tell it what task I want to um, use. Sorry, I have to do that again. So, it's sitting at 150. So, let's go and change this to zero. Right. Zero. And I'm going to execute that and just get it back to a known spot. It won't take too long it'll get back to uh, zero so let's just make sure this is running so that's running so you can see it's actually 500 milliseconds um, I'm going to stretch it sorry compress it compress it or auto compress it compress it and auto scroll so it's gonna scroll here all right let's compress it some more I can go and I can go and change this if I want uh, hand change it but let's go and try this again now so if I go and put in a, uh, a value of let's say uh, 150 there and then I go and write that and then go and um, Oh, it looks like I've actually got, sorry, velocity and position. Uh, the tags that I'm using, you'll notice it turned on when I actually changed that address. So that's not exactly what I want. So you want to be careful here. The The address that I wanted is is V position. See, this is where you want to try and get the, uh, get the different... Um, um, uh, the, the right tags into the right spot. So in our case, we actually want to drive position, the actual position, and we also want to drive uh, drive um, velocity. Okay, so that's better. So let's try this again. So I'm going to change the time. Let's go and make sure we change the time just so that we have uh, one second. So let's make it uh, 10 seconds. All right, so download the trace. So there we go, and we're at zero, and we've got a 150 is our selection. So when I go and um, write the value, it's going to turn this on, auto scroll, and you can see it's actually showing the the um, motion is actually moving here. See that? Okay, well, you know what? My trace doesn't actually, you know what? I need to adjust it a little bit here. So I've got it set for 10 seconds. Let's change it to the time. Time uh, looks like 10 seconds is, is too short of a time. Uh, I wanted to see the whole profile here. So let's call it um, two minutes. Let's try that. See how that works. And download the trace again. And let's try that. So this is in a two minute interval. I'm going to auto scroll. And uh, let me change this back to zero. And I've got to turn this off. Turn this back on. And it should get it to move. There it goes. Maybe it's a little too slow this time, but it is what it is. So you can see the position, the actual position up top is actually going back to zero. And of course, the velocity is gone uh, minus 10 to actually take care of that for me. And once it reaches its position, velocity turns back to zero. That's pretty standard. That's a pretty standard profile for a motion controller. All right, so let me try this again. Let me turn this off. 
let me set this to 150 and uh, write it and again you'll see when I do this I've kind of done the the diagram backwards here but anyways I'll do it again and you'll see it and we'll pause it and you can see the actual profile so there it is going positive so it's going up in position and uh, the velocity has gone up to uh, accordingly to um, to show that it's actually moving and it's reached its position uh, and it's up there so if I go back to zero I want to see the hole there and it's going to go back negative now of course it's it's auto scrolling so it's showing a portion here uh, let me see if I can pause it there so you can see what's going on so there's there's different things that you want to do and uh, to configure the uh, the trace as well but I think you get the point you get the point on how this is all working so you've got move absolute you can play with this uh, let's just go around the table here and just look at a couple of different things so the XLD cell is the rate at which it goes up and down the jerk rate is actually the smoothing around the corners so uh, looking at your trace uh, my trace is gone but if you were to go back to the trace what you'd see the edges of where it transitions from the ramp into the position smooths out so it depends on how sharp you want that edge um, direction velocity and so on uh, all pretty standard stuff so there you go there's your motion control just basic motion control the next video will show uh, basically the same thing that I'm doing here but then I'll also show the the uh, visualization toolbox and I'll use the continuous function chart I, I kind of like that as well as, uh, along with ladder logic uh, to be able to uh, do motion programs hey thanks a lot for coming out to uh, seeing this video and sticking with me through this and I hope this is a good a good primer into motion control in CodeSys and if there's anything I can help with, please don't hesitate to uh, send me an email. Some people have actually emailed me and uh, given me some really good suggestions on uh, future videos. So absolutely, don't don't um, uh, don't wait. Just if you've got any ideas, shoot me an email, and I can always do try and do a video on on those things as well. All right. Anyways, take care and thanks again. Like and share the video if you don't mind.